Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel where today I'm going to show you how I make these really cool serpentine snake d20s. Recently I've been interested in this concept of a giant mythological serpent encircling different worlds or planets if you will, all sorts of things, and I had the idea that I could try to make that a d20. This is the second rendition, this is the first. My first idea was a serpent encircling the moon, and for my second take on it, I wanted to go a little more ambiguous with the black and gold planet or egg in the middle, but both of these use the same technique, so let's make some dice! I'm starting with these paper snakes from Moth and Myth. I will link to them down below in the description, along with everything else that I use that I can link to. These snakes have the design printed on both sides, but they only have the holographic effect on one side, so I'm positioning the snake so that the holographic effect is facing outward against the walls of my mold so that that's the main part visible in the die. And to begin, I'm just taking this little paper snake, and this is a 40mm d20 blank mold that <laughs> I cut the top half of so I could work more easily in it, so it's kind of a partial blank mold. A little weird, but it works, and I am just placing, bending, and putting the snake in until it's in a position that I think looks decent, and taking a very small amount of clear resin that I already mixed from an earlier pour, sorry, and pouring that, and then poking around a bit with a toothpick, because little bubbles like to get stuck under the paper of these snakes, and so I'm trying to make sure no air or anything is trapped down beneath it. I got almost all of it out. One little bubble snuck through, but that's good enough. So I'm just wiggling things around, adding a thin layer of resin, you can't even really see it because it's clear, and then while that's in the pressure pot, moving on to make my little planet moon egg, if you will. I'm using the 3D print of a moon that I get from ArcanaCast, again I'll link them down below, and you can either paint these or you can try to find a way to mold them. The moon I'm using here is a resin cast from a dump pour I made a long time ago, so I couldn't show making it, but again, you could just paint it. And I'm just going into all of the little craters with this gold enamel paint. And obviously these little craters and details will look very different depending on where you get your print from or if you make your own little clay moon that you want to mold. I know other master makers like Cleric's Components where I get a lot of my masters from also have a version of moon inclusions that would look very different but similar to these. Lots and lots of options and variety out there to explore. But for my purposes, I really like the Arcana cast moon shapes and craters, and they're also what I have for now. So I am filling all of those craters with this enamel paint, and then I'm going to work on getting it off, which is a little bit harder. I'm curious if anybody knows a better option, but in my experience, I pretty much only remove enamel paint with rubbing alcohol. It seems to work the best, but it is an absolute mess, and I am so off-center of this frame, I'm sorry. But rubbing alcohol is what works for me, so it is what I'm going to use here. I'm just taking the ends of a Q-tip, dipping it in rubbing alcohol, and then scrubbing away at the excess paint all along the sides of the craters. Obviously it doesn't have to be super precise, but just trying to clean things up. Once I'm happy with how my sphere is looking, it's then time to put it in the mold and get ready to secure it in place with some more resin. I do spend a little bit of time looking around because I think some of the craters look prettier than others and I want the prettiest craters to be the ones showing on the die, so I kind of try to hide the ugly side next to the snake. It's just the little things, you know? <laughs> but once I've put the planet down in my mold, ugly side down or ugly side back, I then move it around a little bit with the tip of a pipette until I think it's about centered. This is always kind of a guessing game, and also stuff loves to move after the resin is poured and mess up all of this hard prep work I'm doing. But eventually the prep work has to stop and we are back to mixing up a little bit of clear resin that we are going to use to secure this planet into place. Initially, I decided to use a pipette here because I wanted to disturb the placement of the planet as little as possible and just pouring resin straight on top would absolutely move it. 
But then I remembered that if I didn't adjust the planet, there would probably be a little bubble caught in the crater that it's resting on because I've made these before and that tends to happen. So I used a pair of tweezers, lifted it up a bit to try to make sure the resin could also get beneath the planet and that bubble would not catch there. And then went back in with my pipette, just circling around the mold a bit and adding resin until I felt like it was high enough and then give it one more quick little pick up with my tweezers, but you can see the same crater remains on top. I'm not moving the position at all. Then it is back to the pressure pot to cure, and the next day I can move the mold around, no problem, our planet is secured in place. For the next casting step, I'm starting with, again, some already mixed up clear resin. You've seen me mix, mix, mix plenty of times. And I'm pouring a decent layer of this clear resin into the mold before coloring some other resin that I've set to the side with this Kaleidoscope Solar Color Dust pigment. I believe this color is called Voltage. Again, I'll link them in the description below. But it is a really beautiful holographic and color shifting pigment, so I'm only adding that to some clear resin, giving it a good mix, 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 mix. And then we will go ahead and pour some of this really beautiful color shifting holographic pigment as like a little nebula around our planet egg here. After adding a little bit more clear. I want to make sure that this planet egg sphere in the middle is protected enough with the clear resin that it won't be totally obfuscated with the pigmented resin that we're pouring. And this ended up being the right choice. I definitely think I needed a little bit more clear to help the planet stand out or it would have been very lost. But on top of that holographic pigment, I am then adding some more clear to spread it around to kind of bloom it out. Then onto that layer of clear, going back in with a little bit more pigment. This time I was using a toothpick because again, I didn't want to end up pouring a whole bunch on and completely messing up the cast. And once I'm done being finicky with that little bit of extra pigment, I'm going in with a little bit of extra clear on top. Again, just to kind of spread, bloom it out and help blend everything together. And giving it a quick degassing before it goes into the pressure pot again, again, again. And once this casting step is done, I want to take the blank out of this partial mold that I have it in. I took a quick little look at the blank to make sure everything was okay, and then cleaned up some of the excess resin and a little bit of stuck silicone around the edges of the mold to get it ready to put it into a complete blank mold to finish this blank cast to put it into our dice molds. What a process. <laughs> So using an X-Acto knife, I'm just going along the edges here where the top of this cast was and smoothing down all of the edges, removing that little bit of stuck silicone and making sure everything is smooth and ready to be placed into a complete mold. Once the partial blank is clean, I can put it into my full blank mold, just making sure I have everything positioned correctly. Arguably, it could have been easier for me to do this if I just put a little bit of clear resin into the bottom of the mold, then put the partial blank in, then did the final cast then and there. But for some reason, I decided I wanted to shove this dry blank into this dry mold and struggle a little bit. Also, it does help me make sure that this blank is positioned correctly. Sometimes if there is some resin in the mold to help ease the way, it can also deceive you into thinking your blank is positioned correctly when you have a corner sticking out of the side. If you know, you know. Eventually I'm able to wiggle the blank in and ensure it's positioned correctly before mix mix mixing up some more clear resin and dividing out a very small portion for a little bit more of that holographic color shifting pigment. So to begin the final blank cast, I am pouring a pretty decent layer of clear and then just a little bit of that same holographic color shifting pigment that I didn't film myself coloring this time, I guess, and topping that with a little more clear, again, to kind of bloom it out and diffuse those places where the pigment is. 
before finishing up this cast with a balancing act that you should not try at home to get a little bit of clear resin onto my lid before realizing I don't have a place to put this mold down, now I do. And lidding my blank mold, giving it a little squeeze, making sure everything is secure. Then once the lid is on, it is back to the pressure pot for another 24 hours before I can pop it out and demold the blank the next day. From what I could see here, I was very happy. The design was looking great. So I went ahead, grabbed my X-Acto knife, trimmed up those cap faces, taking off the flashing, and then got ready to cast in my dice molds. For the final cast here, all I need is a little bit of clear resin that I am giving a good mix, 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 mix to. And after giving it a little bit of time to degas off to the side, I go ahead and fill my mold about two thirds or so of the way full with clear resin. I figure out how and what direction I want the blank and elements to be positioned in the mold, and then holding down heavily on that top face, just go ahead and cram that blank on in there. <laughs> Once that is successfully done, I just give the top a little bit of a degassing, pop all of those visible air bubbles, then I can cap my mold, give the top a little squeeze, hope as hard as I can that everything is positioned correctly, and it is up to the final trip in the pressure pot before getting demolded 24 hours later. And as usual, I don't like to show you the things that make me unhappy, so I was very happy with this D20. I love the outer holographic effect of the snake. I think the black and gold planet is really cool and mysterious and blends well with the color scheme of the snake as well. And I am just a sucker for this holographic color shifting pigment. It is one of my favorite materials to use. I think it is always, always stunning. But with that being said, that is all I have for this video. If you liked this video, consider leaving a like below or subscribing to my channel if you would like to see more videos. I love to hear your thoughts and feedback in the comments. And I have links to all of my social medias and my Patreon down below in the description. So with that being said, I hope that you enjoyed, I hope that you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye